Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsene Zavul, and today we're going to spend some time having a look at arrays and what different types of arrays we can use for different jobs. So we've got some sort of energy weapon here and we're going to start adding in our details. So we're going to start with some sort of electromagnetic containment system or something that's going to go in this back section here. And we're going to design that and array out an object to multiply it out. So shift A and we want a cube. Now this is obviously too big, so let's press S to scale that down. Uh, S on Z to make it taller. Let's move that to where it's gonna be. Again, S and Y, so let's make it a little bit thinner, probably somewhere around there, that looks about right. And then we're gonna need to scale on the, S, on the X axis, so S and X, that's looking about right. Let's check that position. Yeah, probably about there, okay. Now, we're gonna make, wanna make this nice and rounded, and at the moment this is gonna go horribly wrong. So if I go to edge mode and click on those two edges to round off the tops and press Control and B, you can see it's not actually, well it is beveling them, but it's beveling them at a sort of odd angle. And that's because the scale that we've got for this item is all off. If I go back into object mode, you can see it here. We've got scales that are all not matching and we need to fix that. So if you press Control and A, we can apply the scale and what that does is that set the X, Y and Z scale all back to one so that when I go back into edge mode it's and press control and B, it's gonna bevel that much more nicely and, and equally on all edges. And that looks probably about right. Okay, maybe, yeah, happy with that. So, next we want to do the same thing but we want to do it on the other edges so I'm going to press alt and click that edge and then shift and alt and click the other one so we're going to bevel them the same amount again control and b and something about there okay now if you want less bevels or more you can just use the sort of wheel on your middle mouse button okay and again as it's printing I want quite a lot I'm going to go for somewhere around 10 that's going to look fine now if we were doing this for 3D modeling without it being 3D printed, this would probably be fine to just array like this, but we need to take account of the fact that we're 3D printing and sometimes we'll overexpose things slightly and the detail's not gonna be as crisp as we want. So we need to sort that out. So to do that, we want to sometimes leave little spaces between things, but obviously we need to occupy that space with model, otherwise there's just gonna be a gap. So I'm gonna go into face mode, select that face there, select that face there, and we're gonna inset them slightly. So I'm gonna just click I, inset them slightly, and then we're gonna to want to extrude out each one. So I'm gonna extrude that barely a little bit, and the same with this face here. Extrude it out just a little bit, just so that when we array it, there's gonna be a small gap between them. I'm gonna take that a little bit further. We can always change this later. So, got that, and I'm pretty happy with that. Now, we want to start this off on one side, so we need to bring that over. So we can G and Y it and sort of guess where it's gonna be. That's perfectly fine, but it's a lot easier to snap to that face. So I'm gonna click the button at the top here, okay, to turn snapping on, and then I want to put it on face mode so it's gonna to snap to the face. Okay, now when I select this and I press G, it's gonna automatically snap so it's on this face, but at the moment it's sort of going all off. Uh, it could go it going anywhere and we want it exactly in the middle where it is. So again, I'm gonna press G and then I'm just gonna press Y. So now it's going to this face, but it's only going to this face on the Y axis and it's exactly where we want it to be. I'm gonna turn that off so we don't do that again. And actually I am going to press G and move it just the tiniest amount on the Y so it goes slightly into the object for when we try to bring our mesh together. Now there is one other thing we need to do. And again, this is because it's for 3D printing. So I'm gonna press the forward slash on the number pad to bring this just into uh, seeing it by itself. And importantly, I need to delete this face. So delete and then just select face and delete and then just say face. And we'll sort of talk about why in a second just to make sure that we're happy with that. But essentially it's so that we don't get problems with this as an array for our 3D printing. So if you're gonna array in the way that we're doing where everything's gonna be connected together, delete the faces that are going to sort of hit into each other. There are other ways to deal with this, but this is the easiest way. So we're gonna add an array here. So we're gonna come over to our modifier properties. I'm gonna click add modifier and we're gonna select an array. Now at the moment that has made an array on the X axis. 
And we can see that over here where it looks as, where we look at factor, it's we're using a relative offset and this is what we want. This is uh, the perfect array for us and what we're designing. We'll look at a different one later, but we don't want it in the X axis. So we're gonna click on that and turn it to zero. We want it going one in the Y axis. Now, what that means by doing it one is these objects are perfectly touching, okay? One object perfectly touches the other with no gap between it, which is exactly what we need. Okay, we don't want there being gaps in between, we want that exactly touching. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna up the count to get approximately what I want. In fact, I think that's probably about right, but there's a problem here. And that problem is we've got a gap. It's not lining up exactly where we want it to be. Now, because we're using relative offset and everything's gonna just stay one object away it's going to stay connected what we can do now is we can press s to scale and we can scale on the y-axis and notice we can scale it as much as we want and everything stays connected we're just modifying the one on the y-axis and then that modifies every other one with them staying connected so i can essentially get to the point where i'm getting rid of that gap having a little bit of an in is it going inside in fact i'm just going to s and y a little bit less Okay, so it's going just a little bit into that object to help us when we're bringing our mesh together or combining our meshes, but everything's together in one. And that's exactly what we want. So, going back into object mode, okay, we've got this array here. I'm perfectly happy with it. I'm going to apply that. And now, if I press forward slash again, and you have a look at this, oh, I missed something out, my apologies. When we do this, it's very important that we click the merge button here. What that's going to do is any vertexes that are touching each other are going to be combined into one, which means this is going to make one solid object that's not going to have any problems with 3D printing. If we didn't do this, this will have issues when it comes time to 3D print. So we've got our merge selected. We're going to apply it and then we're gonna press forward slash to go into this. Now what we can see is we've got one object, and the moment we've got a hole through it, but if we hadn't deleted these faces, internally there'd be a face at every one of these joins, which then we'd have to individually go through and delete however many there are of these, and that'd be a real pain. So it's much easier to just delete that first face, go into edge mode, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this edge here, so Alt, select the edge, and then I'm gonna press F to fill that one at the end, and then go to the other end, and again, Alt and select, and then press F to fill it. And then if I go back into object mode, I can check that this has worked okay. So I'm gonna use a 3D print toolbox add-on. If you haven't got this added, it's native to Blender. You don't need to download something. Just go to edit, preferences, and over here where it has add-ons, just type in 3D dash print it. You've got to put the dash in and make sure that's selected. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to check that everything is manifold and ready to print. So I'm going to select it, click check all. And if everything's gone right, yep, we've got all the faces. We've got things overhanging. We don't need to worry about that. Okay. Everything zero, zero faces isn't a problem. It just means that I've got some very small faces here. Okay. I pretty much ignore that. You can set that so it doesn't come up, but I've never really bothered. So no manifold edges, no bad edges, no non-flat faces, everything's perfect. So we're all good and I can click back in and I've got my cells there, okay, to keep all this energy contained. So that was using relative offset. Now there is a different kind of array that we're gonna look at, which is usable for a different purpose. And it really just depends what you're trying to do. So we're gonna carry on adding some detail here and we're gonna put some rivets along this bottom bar. Okay, just to add some extra detail that make it a little interesting. So we're gonna press Shift A and we're gonna add in a quad sphere. You can add in a normal sphere. Quad spheres are better for 3D printing and this is something that comes free with machine tools. Again, this is an add-on, um, you can get it, it's free. Uh, if you have a look at my video on settings, it shows you where to go for that. And if you, we're gonna scale that down to a nice small size that's gonna sort of relatively look like a rivet. So let's uh, press G to move that. And yeah, that looks about the right size. And if I just click Y, I can G and X to move that out to the point where it's just sticking out the amount a rivet would. Let's go back to the side view. 
So I'm going to press G and Y to move that down, keeping it sort of perfectly in the middle where we've got it. And we're going to want this along this bottom road now, on this bottle rail. Now, there's a couple of options here in terms of arraying. So the first thing is we could do, let me just uh, put that zero for X and put one on the Y just so we can see it. So I've got that on the Y and we could happily just play around with this relative offset and I can use this if I click on it I can just drag my mouse and say how many I want and I can put the count up so say I want six let's look at it perfectly side on okay well that's seven and then I could get that so it's was I'm sort of happy with where it is so gy let's get that nice and centered and then that one might need a little bit more like 4.1 4.05 something like that okay that's using the relative offset which we've already used okay it's just doing multiples instead of just lengths of one so that's perfectly acceptable for most purposes and this is this is what i probably use but say we've got a model that we're trying to mimic and we know that each rivet has a set distance apart and this doesn't work okay we don't know how far these rivets are apart and that's not useful for us let's say if we're modeling a floor or something like that whatever so what we can do is go to constant offset. If I bring this down, this allows me to multiply things by a distance. So at the moment, we've got it on the X. We don't want it on the X, we want it on the Y because we're looking along the Y axis. You can see that along the top gimbal here. We want it going along the Y direction. And so I wanted it a certain distance apart. Now, I know it says meters, but I always just leave it as meters even when it's millimeters. So let's say I wanted my rivets a certain distance apart and I can control that here with the constant offset. So let's say I wanted them, I don't know, eight millimeters apart for whatever reason. I can make them now and I know each one from center point to center point is eight millimeters apart. And I can still change the count as I would have done. So I might change it, no, that's too many. Change it to something like that, GY, and sort of leave it around there, okay? Now this means that I know the exact distance between each rivet which again, if you're trying to mimic something or something that you're gonna add this to and on that model, the rivets are always a certain distance apart, that constant offset allows you to do that, which is really, really useful. If you've got any other videos that you'd like to see from me from anything I've made, please do feel free to add something in the comments section. Or if you've got any ideas where you might use this, where you haven't used it before, again, love to hear from you guys. And if you want to keep up to date with videos that I'm putting on, please click subscribe and that bell button so that you get the notification from YouTube when I put new videos up.